Hey, welcome back to another bunch of things. Today I'm going to be giving you guys an update on my Hog Island boas and show you the difference of sizes on... It's been a year since the last update from them, so let's get at it. Alrighty guys, so here I got my male Hog Island Boa. Uh, these guys are from Isla Los Cochinos in Honduras. Uh, that's where the name comes from, the Hog Island Boa. These guys are, are going to be smaller than your true red tail Boa. They still under the classification of one of the dwarf species. Uh, I don't consider that they're completely dwarf. Uh, I think that they're just smaller due to the geographic location. Super tame, uh, really nice, really nice snakes. I'm um, gonna see if I can get a little closer to you guys so you guys can see the colors. These guys are interesting. Uh, they have something really cool that happens. It's just based on the uh, weather or temperature. Uh, they have the tendency to change um, to make themselves lighter color or darker color. All right, so I had to get a little monster, otherwise he will not stop. So, so this is my male. Uh, he's pushing uh, two years old now, and he actually just shed. And I had to soak him a little bit because the weather here in Southern California has been really weird lately. And he gets, it has gotten really dry, and sometimes it gets humid. So it's been it's been a bottle to try to maintain the humidity levels correctly. Uh, so he was about to shed and I didn't want to increase too much the humidity because I knew that it wasn't going to dry quickly. So he, he had a little bit of a stock shed, which is the first time in two years that we had any stock sheds with them. So I had to soak him, but he's, he's back to normal being his true self. Now he, he's a little smaller, uh, than my female logically, uh, but it's nice, it's nice little snakes. Um, he is uh, a little bit more headstrong than the female. The female is a little bit more, I have a little bit more trust in here. He, on the other hand, is a little, he can get a little snappy sometimes. But really nice temper, really nice colorings. They have uh, versus, versus the regular red tail boas, uh, you have a lot of black freckles on these guys. Uh, not dark lining in the tail like you will see with a regular red tail boa that you have that really red tail and really dark markings. These ones are, let's see if I can put myself this way. These ones are a little, it's, it's, it's a dark brown, but it doesn't get black. The only black that you will see pigmentation wise it's just gonna be all these blushings. Now the female is, has less freckles than he does, but beautiful pinks on the sides. We'll see. Maybe if I'm too close. They have really, really, really nice pinks. Really awesome snakes. So they're doing well. They're they're eating really. They're really eating nice. I haven't had any issues feeding these guys. Are garbage disposals like. You feed him as many times as you feed him, they will eat. So they're right now in a regime of eating once weekly um, as they're still growing. And once they get to to their full size, then they, they will probably go to bi-weekly. Uh, other than that, they're doing great. Uh, I'm going to give you a, sh a shot on their enclosures. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit of what is in in the future for them. We're going to be upgrading their enclosures, they're getting into big enclosures each, my female and my male, and hopefully get ready and on the right weight uh, for the breeding season for them. Um, I won't breed them this year. They're going to be breed. They're going to be on the breeding schedule for next year, possibly. If not, the year 
uh, over. So, so far, they're doing nice. They're getting, they're getting more used to handling. Uh, as I said, the female, I'm going to get her out in a second. The female is way more, more calm and less, uh, less headstrong. So, so I'm going to put him back into his enclosure and then I'll, I'll get the female out and then I'm going to get to show you guys the enclosure and then that will be a wrap. All right, so here's my female. Uh, she is super, super, super nice. She shed uh, about four weeks ago or so. Those colors. Those colors are really nice. Now she is, um, as I said, she's a little bit, I trust her a little bit more because she's a little bit more calm. She has less crazy movements and sometimes if she, if she doesn't get as nervous as the male does. Um, but I haven't, I haven't got beaten by either of the two yet. But they're really, they're really nice. Now, she's, she got a little bit more of sides to her. They're about to get into a different size meal as they already, already grew enough to graduate on their next, the next size the next size rodents. So, so yeah, they really nice. Let's see if I can get closer and see if you guys can see that this one has less uh, freckles, less black freckles than than the male does. She is, has way more pinks on her than he does, and logically her tail doesn't have any blacks. It's just dark browns and there's a comp comparison to the true red tail boa we don't have that red tail it's actually on this case it's a little bit of uh, brighter browns and cream and white so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put her back and we're gonna go over their setup and then give you guys an idea of the type of setup that they're gonna be hopefully soon uh, upgrading to and that's gonna be their permanent setup and that's where they're gonna live the rest of their lives and hopefully uh, breed and see if we can get some babies all right so here's the setup and yeah they're getting they're gonna have to get up upgrade because they're way too big now so we're gonna be getting um, Full from opening cages, uh, they're probably twice the size of this cage, which will be plenty because it's going to be twice uh, on all dimensions. Um, say that probably even even bigger than that. Uh, so what we got is. Nightlight, daylight, uh, hide, and uh, water, hide dish, and we also have under here, we do have a heat mat. And same is for the male, uh, we got the same, same setup. So the next setup is, as I said, is going to be double in size in all dimensions and it's going to be pretty much the same type of setup from facing it's going to be wooden cages uh logically treated it's not going to be glass like this and it's not going to be top opening top opening was fine when they were small but uh right now it's kind of a hazard to try to get them in and out so it's going to be easier for maintenance and it's going to be easier also to to maintain them so right now they're kind of chilling uh they just got out and they're they're now like, okay, I wanna wanna stay outside and do things, but unfortunately we can do that. Now that's the female. Now this guy, on the other hand, he pulled a Houdini a few months back. And since then, since he realized that he escaped, I had to literally lock his cage 
and once the female realized that he escaped, then she decided to go in the same route and try to escape, so I had to lock her cage as well. So now they're all, both of them, are, are locked in their cages because every time that you give them a chance, they just go out and start destroying everything on their path. Getting tangled on cables and pulling all the light bulbs out and just just going insane. So that's where we are. That's the plan. That's where that's what we're trying to do. Um, unfortunately, I'm running out of space in the house, and uh, there's quite a few snakes that I would like to acquire. But unfortunately, my living situation is not letting me go those routes. But to come when it comes to my reptiles. Their upgrades on their cages, those cages are phenomenal. Uh, they're all handmade and they're super, super cool. Uh, and logically being able to provide them with like three times the amount of space that they have is just going to be crazy for them. They're going to have plenty of space to move around. Even though they move around, they get out uh, of their cages quite often. So they got some, some movement and, and enrichment. Uh, but once again, uh, I don't want to keep him on a cage that is too small and this one is not yet there, but it's pretty close. So we're going we're gonna to be getting that update. The next thing to come, uh, more likely, hopefully by the beginning of next year, we're going to be getting a mail for my Amazon tree boa. Now it's not going to be a regular Halloween as she is. It's actually going to be a different morph. Uh, I'm not going to get too much on details, but is a fantastic animal coming from a reproductive breeder and is a really amazing bloodline. Uh, not cheap uh, howsoever, but it's a beautiful animal and I will be able to hopefully pair them with her and and get that bloodline um, mix within within the projects and then we'll see where that will take us uh, as for the geckos all the expos uh, this year were for the most part cancelled due to the whatever that is going on so we are going to be jumping into some more for different geckos i'm not gonna get too much into details but there's um yeah there's a couple of there's two morphs that I will probably will jump on and start working on two different projects at the same time. And once again, let's see where that's going to take us. But that's all I got for you guys. Um, next videos, uh, you're going to be seeing me coming, um, opening hunting day for duck start on Saturday 24th. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to hunt the opening, uh, but I will be there the day after. And I will be on a sweat line due to the fact that, as you guys know, uh, all the places that I can go duck hunting here in Southern California, exclusively in the near in San Diego area, are just uh, places that take reservations, uh, meaning you get the dates uh, that you want to hunt, you put the reservations, and then uh, that goes through a massive drawing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, last year in one of those places, which I had three drawings pulled, uh, there was uh, 45,000 reservations put for that one place. So the odds are going to be really crazy. So I already got a set reservation for a different place. I'm really excited, never hunt that place. And apparently, is completely different to where I use, where where I normally go hunting. So um, I'm looking forward to go and take a look. That's gonna be on November fourth, uh, and uh, on the twenty fifth, which is this Sunday coming, I will be yeah on a sweat line. Hopefully, uh, somebody misses the reservation and I get their own time to put myself on the list and be able to hunt. If that is not the case, I already. Um, have a plan B, which is a field that is public. Uh, you don't need reservations. Now it's an open field. There's no water, but you literally, I will be right in front of the 
the management, the wildlife management area where I'm allowed to hunt. So since the pressure is probably going to be really heavy, I have this idea that we might be able to swim by some passing shots. Uh, I don't have uh, full-size decoys uh, in order for me to set up, but let's see what happens. Uh, uh, either way, I'm going to explode all the options that I have in front of me and try to make something out of it. So that's all I got. Reptiles, uh, we're going to be working those couple of things that I talked earlier and it was nice to see y'all uh, come and check in the video out. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Pancho out.